Martin Slinger has got a beef suckler herd. As part of this study, he was one of our control farms, so he didn't have any exclusion measures put on his buildings. So you're one of, the, one of the farms that was kind enough to take part in a ferris study where we put up some cameras around your farm to look at the actual level of badger activity on, in the farm buildings. Were you surprised at what we found on the photos? Not really, not <laughs> with the number of badgers we knew we had here. Yeah. Uh, some of the photographs were spectacular and seeing them get up towards a spout of a trailer to lick it out clean and that's when we took a decision to do away with that one and get an enclosed bin. And so actually seeing the evidence of the badgers eating from the trailer, that prompted you to do something about making your feed more secure? It did, yeah. Because we may be lucky in this valley, but you go out over the hills all around us, there's been large amounts of TB over the years and still is. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to try and do something. Lynn Jones is a dairy farmer. He wasn't part of the Ferro study, but he's been working on his own initiative to put measures in place to try and reduce contact between his cattle and badgers. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, badgers uh, in the farm where we keep the dairy cows. Uh, the, the activity you see a lot of them um, turfing up the grass and things like that. There's one hedge, hedgerow there, there's, there must be about five or six sets along the hedgerow, and they do tend to come out into the, to the field with their holes, you know. And what measures have you taken in your fields to try and reduce the contact between badgers and cattle? Well, in the home farm here, we've uh, put electric fencing around all the fields, permanent electric fencing. So if you get a set coming out further than the hedge, we just can extend the, the electric fence uh, around it with no problem at all, really. So that can be done quite, quite easily. If cattle see fresh soil, they tend to go and lick it and, and rub it and, and whatever. I don't really like to see them doing that, you know, I'd pr much to prefer to uh, put a fence around it then. Have you done anything to try and reduce the contact between badgers and cattle in your buildings? One thing we are in progress of doing at the moment, we had an outside feed area in the dairy farm and we are now building a shed over that. So hopefully it will be, once it's finished, it will be uh, badger proof, the doors will be uh, fitting to the floor and things, so badgers won't be able to um, go into it uh, during the night. Uh, so hopefully that, going forward, that will uh, minimise the contact as, as well. The study found that when the exclusion measures were properly maintained and used, they were 100% effective in stopping badger visits to those buildings. It was also discovered that if you only had measures on some of the buildings, it reduced the frequency of visits to other buildings on that farm that didn't have measures in place. This effect was most evident when it was the feed stores that had exclusion measures fitted. However, the measures did not completely stop badger visits to the farmyard. Badgers would regularly return, looking for access to buildings, for example if gates were left open. This emphasises the fact that exclusion measures need to be used every night and kept in a good state of repair. This particular flap here, one day when I cleaned out, I forgot to close it. Not intentionally, it just happened. But then when I spoke to yourself at a later date, um, you said a badger had entered that particular night. So it just proves the importance of keeping the, keeping the, the protection there in place all the time. Badger visits to farm buildings can be quite frequent. And even if you do not see them, they may still occur. Badgers visit feed stores most frequently, however visits to cattle housing also occur quite regularly. A gap of just three inches is big enough to enable a badger to gain access. A range of simple measures which block gaps and use sheer sides with no footholds can stop badgers entering buildings. If you cannot stop visits to feed stores, consider storing feed in metal, lidded feed bins. Exclusion measures must be used every night and kept in a good state of repair. Do you think implementing the measures was worthwhile? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, yes. I would mean, recommend anybody to really think hard about it. But I can certainly see the benefits and the measures do work, so I would recommend anybody to seriously think about it. Uh, I, I think uh, any way that you can keep them out from the feed areas, I mean, it, it's, um, I mean we know that they, they're looking, the badgers are looking for food, and they come in, they go up the mangers. Uh, any way that you can keep them out I mean, is, is bound to lessen any, any risks of them, you know, any infected animals getting in. 
Hopefully, over the course of this DVD, you will have discovered a little more about the general ecology and behaviour of badgers and how they are involved in TB transmission. This knowledge and the practical steps that have been suggested can help reduce the risk to your cattle. Admittedly, some of these measures will not be suitable or even necessary on all farms and they will not completely remove the risk of your cattle getting bovine TB. However, by implementing some of these simple ideas, you'll be able to mitigate the risk of your stock coming into contact with badgers, both at pasture and in farm buildings.